and what's up? My name is Abhinav. Uh, I'm the head of design at Unacademy. Uh, Unacademy is a edtech startup. We venture funded. We um, we're a test prep platform. We have learner apps and educator apps. We're a platform for educators to come and find an audience that they can teach, and we're a platform for learners to come and study for what they want to. Um, I also run a bunch of other things. I run this website called UI Sources, which is a design inspiration site. I recently wrote a book called Pajama Profit about freelancing. Uh, previously, I did a music app called Listen. I was at housing.com as well. Uh, so at Unacademy, we're a team, we're a pretty small design team. Um, so we're three product designers, one illustrator. Uh, tech product and design overall is about 40 people. So I'm going to be talking about what were our goals with the design system. What were the considerations that we had at our size? And hopefully some takeaways that you can apply to your own organization. So for me to get a read of the room, how many people in here are developers? OK. And how many here are designers? Any other folks who are sort of in between? Not pure development, not design? OK, cool. So this is uisources.com, profit. All right, so if you sort of zoom back to where, how we got here, the current state of design, um, the years around 2010, before 2010 and somewhere around that, most designers, and I'm talking about 99 or 95% of designers, used Photoshop. And Photoshop is an extremely powerful tool, but when it comes to screen design, like you're designing screens, it's websites and apps, it can be overkill. Like it's got a lot of bloat that can make working harder. And so somewhere around 2010, a new entrant came into the field, which was Sketch. And within the next few years, so Sketch came out in 2010, but by 2012, most designers, most design teams all over the world had switched to Sketch. And the reason they had done this was because Sketch just took one slice out of Photoshop and made it really efficient to design screens and websites, and screen-based design, basically. And if you're in a tech company right now, designer or developer, there's about a 95% chance that this is your design stack or some variation of this. So for design, you use something like Sketch. For storage, version control, you use Dropbox. Maybe you use GitHub. Maybe you use something like Abstract. Uh, for communication, you know, of course you have Slack, but you use maybe more specialized tools like Envision. Handoff typically happens in Zeppelin. Uh, you use something like Marvel or maybe even Envision to prototype. Maybe complex prototypes happen in principle or Framer. So this was our design stack as well at Unacademy uh, about six months back. And as part of designing our, or coming up with a new design system, we made a few changes to this, and this is what our stack looks like right now. So most tools, like we didn't know it at the time when we were trying out Figma, but Figma started with replacing Sketch for us, and then slowly it moved into everything else. And by slowly, I mean within three days. Right? Figma made, made it really simple for us to completely migrate from all these tools that we were using to just one single tool. And this happened at the same time that we were figuring out what our design system needs to be. So some of the goals that we had with this. So of course, the first goal with designing any design system, wherever you are, is consistency. Uh, so the Unacademy, we have, at Unacademy, we have four apps. We have the learner app is on iOS and Android, and the educator app, which is also on iOS and Android. And one of the things we wanted to do was be able to move really fast. So we were switching to React Native. And we were starting with one of the apps, and the goal was to switch all four apps to React Native eventually. So this was the perfect time for the design team as well to come up with a new system that ensured consistency moving forward. The second goal that we had was we wanted it to be real time. And what I mean by that is if we're pushing out an update every single week right, to our apps, we want everybody to be on the same page no matter what part of the process it is. So let's say I'm designing a new feature. I don't want the developer to know about it five days later when I'm done with it. I want everybody to know that we're working on this so that when I am ready to sort of pass the bat baton, 
the other people can take it and run forward so we wanted real time to be one of the core goals of the system the third was collaboration so often with tools like sketch what happens is so sketch is only installed on the laptop of designers so macbooks right it's a macbook only tool what would happen is i start designing something i'm sort of halfway there my pm maybe knows about it the developer finds out only when it's his time to find out or his or her time to find out which is not right uh, when you're building new features it needs to be a collaborative process so everything can run efficiently the fourth was communication focused now communication has the tendency to become an overhead because there are always questions like you know have you started with this or is this on zeppelin yet or the version on zeppelin is that the right one you showed me something else yesterday or you know yo send me the link to that design file or send me the dropbox link or it's looking different on my computer do i not have the fonts installed like just things like that can add up every single day months right so with these as our goals let me talk about how we sort of transitioned into figma one of the main things about it is figma is a multiplayer tool and this is probably the first design tool ever to be multiplayer what this means is it's a web based tool with mac windows apps and in a single design file a single source of truth you can see everybody who's who's on it so you can see whether it's a pm whether it's a designer whether it's a developer they're all in the same file and they're watching updates happen real time like literally as i'm drawing rectangles putting text they can see this happening on their screen and i can just click one of the names here to observe what they're looking at right now um and figma is completely online so all you need to do is share view access or edit access this is just the same as google docs uh if you share edit access it's for designers they can edit your file if you share view access they can get the values out of it the same values that they would get out of zeppelin and since it's all in one place you everybody is on the same page so if you have a screen the designers and developers both know that this is the final thing that i need to be working with communication happens within figma as well so while a design is going on let's say i'm on day 2 of my design a developer can ask me hey have you accounted for that flow when you know you don't have this one thing and then this needs to happen right there and i'm be like yeah i'm working on it this is where it is right now and i can just mark it as resolved so all of these communications happen within the design tool and this makes it very very efficient and avoids unwanted surprises in the future and of course there's transparency so anybody who's added to the team on the left side you have all projects and then you can see everything that's going on right now the first file was edited 5 minutes ago that file was edited 2 hours ago and then you see the colored circles it means there's activity there so like four people are currently on that file right now one person is currently on this file right now so there's never a question of asking for something if you need to know you can just go here and you immediately get what you need so this cuts off a lot of over overhead around communication and of course it's multi platform so it works whatever computer you have so now let me give you an overview of our design system how we've structured it what are the parts to it um so so the design system as well it's one of the projects everybody has access to it not everybody can edit it only one or two designers on the team can uh, we have colors so we have a fixed set of colors the colors have names these names are consistent in the design files as well as in the react native code base and any time a designer draws something in figma they can just choose these are the on academy colors these are other colors and you can just you, it's never a case where the multiple shades of green just because over time slippage happened or something like that the same thing with typography so the styles are very clearly defined any time you write something you can say okay this is an h1 this is an h2 these are titles and the rules around this the designers typically know that p2 is to be used in cases like that the icons as well so we have a custom icon set of about about 150 icons um some of these are category icons some of them are action, like actions in the app and we made this a component as well so anytime you're working on something you can just 
Figma has a search. So you can just search for confidence and drag and drop into your file. So the way we sort of structured our confidence. So typically in design systems, you think about atoms and then you think about molecules. Atoms are like the smallest elements that need that probably repeat across the system. So things like buttons, drop downs, dividers. Now buttons, I still call them atoms, although there's text and then there's a rectangle because text is not a component. It's just a style that's applied. Molecules could be something like list items or hopeful sections in your app or maybe the app bar, common Android and iOS elements. And so our main component file, it has all the base components here. Um, the composite components are all, you know, sort of arranged like this as well. So at any point of time, if a developer, for example, needs to know what primary buttons look like or primary buttons with pressed state or a loading state, they can come here. Of course, the development team also has their own set of documentation once they develop this. So both of these always stay consistent. And accessing components. Now, one of the things with design systems is that when you have new designers that join your team, it can be hard to sort of onboard them and get them to start designing at 100% efficiency in the same way that the rest of the designers have been doing for a few months or a few years. And the way the component system helps with this is that every single file, every single design file in Figma, like you say new file and you start, along with your layers, you have a list of every component that exists in the main library. And you can search, you can see visual indications of each. And when you have a screen, you can just drag out header, status bar, button, and within 30 seconds, you have a full screen ready in front of you. So this also makes it really fast to prototype. Let's say you have a concept in mind, you sketch it out, but and you show it and they're like, you know, I don't really see it. You can just go to this, within a minute, you have actual screen ready. And this might not be what actually goes out in the end, but this can at least help you communicate what the concept is. And now one of the, another hard part about design systems. So if you've tried building a design system in Sketch, one of the hard parts about that is Sketch is a native Mac app. So you have Sketch files that you store in Dropbox and then Dropbox syncs this to everybody's computer. Um, let's say I make a change to my team library. There is sometimes a chance where the changes are not reflected when they need to be. And this can creep in in the form of an old version of a component versus a new version of a component. So in Figma, the way we handle this is anytime I go to the main component file, I make a change, it says, do you want to publish this? I type a message, very similar to GitHub. Uh, anybody who's used a component that I just changed will get a notification in every file that they have open right now that uses those components. It says component updates available. This is what was changed. Do you want to update it? And it updates throughout the entire file. So that's about it. That's it for how we did this at on Academy. Any other questions? Uh, is there any possibility of versioning designs? For example, um, you have a drop down, okay? And uh, the next version is, let's like, say, disable button, disable the drop option, may have one to hover. So, uh, is, there, is it possible? I, I'm just curious um, to version it. And because in S Sketch or something, which is just a binary file, uh, you don't want to see, you can, I don't know if you can see it, the previous differences like that. Mm. So is it, is it possible for version it with who, who, who did it? Yeah. What kind of? So let's say you have a component like a button. Um, so I'm going to talk about two cases here. The first is when the button itself changes. Um, so what we typically do in those cases is we take the old component and we put it into an archive file so that if ever in case we need to bring it back, we can always do that. Talking about multiple states of a component. So based on how you name your components in Figma. So let's say I do button slash primary, button slash primary with loading. Um, these are all states of the same component. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get it, the, the states of the same, but, but they're all different. But I'm talking about one specific version, like, also, like a drop-down. Yeah, 
drop down I pick yeah. one component right so and then uh, uh, the design team or the, the management team wanted another version and uh, who wanted it uh, I don't know I typically when you, like in a code you when you say when you change it you would you can see it because it's text you can see it uh, who changed it how why they change it I mean like that so is it but typically in a design um, y like if it, we are talking about binary files that photoshops and all so it, it, there and then you cannot see who, who who change it why they change it the way we yeah. do that is we also restrict access to the main component file so if you look at big organizations like Flipkart for example they have dedicated <laughs> design managers who just whose job is just to maintain the design system in our case we design like access to edit the components is given to just one designer There's never a change of somebody overwriting that but in the case of new features let's say we need a new component the process usually goes like the designer comes up with a new version of the component or let's say the PM wants something and it doesn't fit into the current uh, implementations um, this is then discussed with the person who manages the design systems then we figure out whether there's a need for a new component or we can use the old one or add a state to an existing component and then in design as well as in the react native component set all of these updates happen hey abhinav i have three questions mm -hmm. right uh, performance online only and um, how does it fit in with prototyping you mentioned you're still using framer Mm. and principle in some situations yeah so firstly performance figma is web based so the tools the apps that you have on windows and mac uh, they they do load web but it's faster than sketch so for example just something as simple as so something as simple as panning between your design file it's much faster in figma so and the way i say this is that when you use Figma and you use it for about 10 minutes, going back to Sketch feels like going back to Photoshop. And I've seen this with a lot of designers, so which is why it's something that you can just get hooked to. Right? Second is about online. So by default, all files are online, and you do need an internet connection to work. So when you're working in your offices, usually it's typically fine. But in case you do need to work offline, let's say you're, you have a flight, or you want to go into the field, you can download these Figma files as .fig, which means you can work on them offline. And when you do work on them offline, certain features are out. So like, you might not be able to access the component library. You might not get changes. But this is like a temporary measure when you do need to do that. We have one more. We have a question here. That, yeah. Good. So, buddy. Uh, yeah, I know you. I, wo I have worked with you in the past. So, uh, I have a question that that now you. When I was there in your company, an academy, so you used to work with uh, different different tools. Now you have moved to Figma. So, what is your take on like how, uh, like, is there any story when you uh, shifted your team from this particular tool to now this yeah. tool? And can you just switching, share? Switching is really fast. The reason is for that is Figma. You can actually import Sketch files. So, even if you have your entire system in Sketch, you can directly import that, and within let's say 10 minutes, all your files are in Figma ready to go. When it comes to other tools, so developers were apprehensive because they were used to Zeppelin, for example. They're like, what is this new Figma thing? Why do I need to use it? But the sort of communication overhead that it cut out, it's like every time I would add something to Zeppelin, I would message saying, you know, new version on Zeppelin. And then somebody tells me to change it, and then I send a message again, new version added to Zeppelin. Like this was totally cut out. And developers were missing the thing where they get to see the design as it's being made. They would only see it in the end. So just benefits like that of being able to see it anytime. Switching happened for us like within a week. Yeah. Hi, uh, hey. I'm a developer and uh, uh, I'm, I mean, this is the first time that I heard about Figma. Uh, so uh, my question is uh, like, is there an extension like uh, that, like we create components in Figma and is there an, any extension that it can be exported to a direct, uh, maybe a React component? No. no. <laughs> so the best it does is it gives you the same values that you would get on Zeppelin. OK, but, so uh, no. SCSS, those parts can be. Yeah, yeah. All right. And Rahul, to answer 
your question about prototyping as well, sorry I missed on that, is Figma lets you do basic prototypes in the same way that Sketch does, so clickable prototypes, same as Marvel, um, but working, so we don't really work with Framer, we haven't found the need to work with real data, uh, but principle so far did work only with Sketch, but they've recently now added a frame, uh, Figma import as well, so workflow wise it stayed pretty much the same. So one thing that we do miss in Figma is the use of plugins, so if you're plugin heavy, this thing, you need to figure out alternatives. And a lot of these alternatives are built into Figma as native um, functionality. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Hi. Hey. So uh, I am a developer as well, but uh, I was in the other conference room. And uh, I just came, so I do not know whether you've covered this or not. But I've recently started using Figma, and uh, I usually used to do stuff on Illustrator. And it was a pain, you know, to just transfer, I mean, transfer the files from Illustrator to Figma. Because whenever I used to, you know, like copy and paste it, like, you know, there was no documentation on the website. Mm. And when I used to copy and paste it, it just used to, you know, like transfer into images. Mm. So do you have any idea, like, you know, how do I do that? Because there were like a lot of files, so I have to individually, you know, like, um, select individual groups and then copy it as SVG and then, you know, paste it and stuff. Yeah. So. If you have, so we like, did paste that with our icon set, for example. So our icon set was made in Illustrator and then brought into Figma. Um, okay. For us, SVG import was the way that we did it. Okay, you guys also did it. Yeah, okay. we just used SVG import. Okay. But okay. in fact, one of our, the Illustrator on our team, mm -hmm. he was exclusively using Illustrator. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of illustrations directly happen in Figma. Yeah. Because Figma has a really advanced pen tool that's way better than Illustrator. Yeah, it's really fast. I so mean, I. <laughs> I started using so like, it and I fell in love with I it. Would, I wouldn't be surprised if you switched from Photoshop and Illustrator also yeah. Figma for marketing yeah. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So, have you compared for Figma with Framer? Uh, like, has anyone asked this question before? or? Mm. So, with Framer, Framer initially started as a prototyping tool, but uh, they're trying to become an all-in-one design tool. So now they have something which is Framer X, which is a full tool. So we did compare, but I think two things about it, why we didn't switch. One is that Framer X can be really useful if you're doing stuff in React, because it lets you get React components very easily. And it does not for React Native. Secondly, Framer X doesn't yet support design systems. So you can do screens, you can design this, but if there's multiple people working on it, you can't really create a system for this. So you would just have to have one sketch file which has your components, but there's no concept of updating, versioning, and things like that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, do we have any more questions? Okay, so thank you, Abhinav. Thank you so much.